coming up on Evening Edition. The nation reacts to the State of the Union. Plus, a Murfreesboro family makes a scientific discovery. And the River Region faces potential flooding. Live from Southern Illinois University, you're watching River Region Evening Edition. Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Jacob Gordon. And I'm Hannah Frisch. We start tonight with the weather as the rain continues to fall across the River Region. Madeline Parker is here now with a first look at weather. Madeline, last week we were talking about cold temperatures and now there's talks of rain. What can we expect? Well, Hannah, Jacob, we are going to be seeing a lot of rain. We're going to be seeing some thunderstorms tonight all the way into tomorrow around the midday. The temperature will be getting warmer going from 52 up until 62 degrees from tomorrow morning and until the midday. But I'll be talking more about that flood watch that we'll be seeing being in effect until about midnight tonight. We will also be seeing some temperatures dropping, but I'll tell you more about that in my five day forecast. President Trump touted unity and bipartisanship last night's State of the Union address. Soon, the president may get an opportunity to practice what he preaches. The deadline to fund the government is next week, but the only way to avoid another government shutdown is for Congress and the president to work together. Mary Maloney has more from Washington. With the State of the Union in the rear view, now is the time for bipartisan action. Another hurdle is quickly approaching. Next week, part of the government will shut down again if a funding deal isn't reached. So let's work together, compromise, and reach a deal that will truly make America safe. Both sides seem to be stuck on the same point that caused the longest shutdown in U.S. history. Simply put, walls work and walls save lives. America is made stronger by the presence of immigrants, not walls. To get funding for a wall, the president could bypass Congress and declare a national emergency at the southern border. I think he would prefer not to have to, to try to, to cross that bridge, so to speak. Republican uh, leaders hope they can reach a bipartisan deal first. But I believe at the end of the day we should get this done legislatively and I'm looking forward to making that happen. But that can only happen if the president and Congress compromise. If the president stays out of it, we will get a deal. In Washington, I'm Mary Maloney. Now, after the State of the Union address, the Paul Simon Public Policy Institute analyzed President Trump's speech. John Shaw, the director of the Institute, said the president's speech was inconsistent because his goal of American unity was undermined by diverse rhetoric. Shaw also noted that the State of the Union was different from ones in years past. Oftentimes in, in, in State of the Union addresses, there are almost to a fault a laundry list of new proposals. Uh, President Clinton, for example, famously would unveil 15-point economic plans, 20-point uh, health care plans. There was none of that in this speech. Now, Shaw also predicts that the State of the Union will not have a long-lasting effect on President Trump's presidency. The Franklin County Sheriff's Office and Illinois State Police are investigating a shooting that occupied the rural West Frankfurt overnight. The Sheriff's Office says one person was hospitalized and a suspect is in custody. No further information has been released at this time. And the Missouri revenues are down about 7% compared to last year. State Budget Director Dan Haug announced yesterday that the net general revenue collections for the fiscal year were down by about $382 million as of the end of January. The biggest drop is in the individual income tax collections, which are down about 10% so far this fiscal year. Legislative budgeters are hoping to make up much of the difference as more people file their taxes. And the Federal Highway Administration announced yesterday that Indiana will receive nearly $6.2 million in emergency relief funds to repair roads and bridges damaged by severe storms and flooding. The flooding caused by heavy rainfall and melting snow caused numerous road closings last year. This funding is a part of more than $705.7 million in funding to help 34 states and three territories make repairs to damaged roads and bridges. A seven-year-old boy from Murfreesboro recently found a rare bison bone. Oliver Stoffel was on a nature walk with his family last month when he found a rare bison bone in the little cave. He brought it into school where his teachers showed it to professors at SIU Carbondale, where they confirmed it was an American bison humorous over 2,000 years ago. Holding something in your hand that's two or 3,000 years old kind of sparks your imagination. What else was there at the time on the property that we now live uh, at? Um, you know, who else was like walking around, running around? 
Now, very few bison bones have been found south of St. Louis. And students and faculty at SIU had the chance to try something new for lunch today. Evening Edition's Patrick Cotto has more. On a normal day, most Americans have sandwiches and fruit for lunch. But today, SIU wanted to make things a little more international. SIU hosted its 57th annual International Food Fair where friends and families got to enjoy food from other countries. This tradition was started by a group of international students as they did not just want to represent themselves. The goal is to kind of get other cultures involved and then Americans also just to come and taste and see the other cultures and really experience it. And it's a way just for these people from other nations to share what they have with us. These SIU international students are involved in many RSOs with one of them known as International Student Council that involves many countries and they thought it was the right decision for SIU to host the event. I think it's a nice idea. It's the means to actually have this, you know, more tri-cultural exchange, you know, because um, when I came to SIU 2016, um, I was welcomed so much. And for me, being international, I think this is the means for me to say thank you SIU, you know, for giving me the platform to showcase my culture. For the folks that made it out to the event, they knew they were in for a good treat. Every single table uh, uh, that was selling food just had people everywhere. It was uh, uh, just a fantastic turnout today. And just, uh, I mean, I don't blame them. The, every single piece of food I ate was delicious. For Evening Edition, I'm Patrick Cotto. Ahead on Evening Edition, President Trump plans for a second summit with North Korea. But first, how long is the rain going to continue to fall? Madeline is in next with a check out of the River Region forecast. We'll be right back. And 2018 was the fourth hottest year ever recorded, but some weather experts say January 2019 was 5 to 21 degrees colder than normal. According to NOAA and NASA, the last five years have been the warmest ever recorded in modern history. Illinois weather experts say January started above average, but ended with temperatures below normal. Forecasters say there is a high chance for below average temperatures for northern and central Illinois and a wetter than average February. Now here's Madeline with the check forecast. Well, Jacob, right now it is 47 degrees and we do have some rain going on right now, but our dew point is at 46, so we've got a lot of rain and look at that humidity, 99%. The wind isn't that strong. We only have a five mile per hour wind coming from the east, but our pressure is at 29.88. But if we look at our almanac, we can see that today right, the high was 49, but tonight it'll be getting warmer, so our low will be about 51 degrees. For our average temperatures, it'll be, it's usually around 44 degrees for the high and 24 for the low. We did not reach those temperatures, nor did we reach that record high of 72 degrees set in 2008, nor that record low set of negative 2 degrees set in 1978. And I'm actually very thankful for that. I'm getting really tired of these cold temperatures. But we can see it is starting to cool down in our region. Waterloo is at 39 degrees with cloudy skies. As I said, Carbondale is raining with 47 degrees. And Marion is only 1 degree warmer at 48 degrees with some rain. Cape Girardeau has some thunderstorms as well as Paducah and they're at 53 degrees and 59 degrees respectively and Evansville has some rain as well but with 52 degrees but we look at the national temperatures we can see that it's starting to get a little bit cooler than it was in the past couple of days we can see that in St. Louis area it was in the greens so that's in like the upper 40s into the mid 40s we can see that it's really warm in the south between Dallas and Atlanta going up into the 70s almost but we will be seeing some change in temperature over the coming days but let's take a look at the surface map Right now we are in some flash flooding with a low pressure system coming in. So we are really going to be seeing some flooding over the next two days. We are currently in a flood watch, but that will be taking place until tonight at midnight. We do have some freezing rain up in the northern part of Illinois, which will be moving down to by tomorrow with that low pressure system moving its way up. And we will be still having some rain and we'll have a river flood warning tomorrow until 2.30 p.m. But for tonight, like I said, we still have that flood watch going on and lots of thunderstorms. So we'll be seeing those throughout the night. The temperature will be dropping, will be going to 51 degrees. We have a 12 mile per hour wind from the southeast, so it's going to be very windy and very wet. So be careful if you are driving and if you are going to be driving, watch out for water on the roads. Sun setting at 526 p.m. For tomorrow morning, the rain is not going to be stopping. It is actually going to keep going until mid afternoon. So it'll be thunderstorms in the morning and then it'll have a temperature of 62 degrees with some south winds of 15 miles per hour. So it's going to be very windy and very wet. So make sure you are wearing a rain jacket because it is going to be very a lot warmer than we've been seeing, but we still want to make sure we are protected from those climates. 
So we'll be seeing tomorrow we'll be having some thunderstorms. We do have that river flood warning until about 2.30 p.m. And we'll be having some 25 mile per hour wind gusts. So everyone be careful tomorrow. We'll also have a temperature of 64 degrees for the high. Our regular ones will be from the southwest at 19 miles per hour. And we'll be seeing sunrise at 6.55 a.m. Now tomorrow night the rain will finally be stopping but unfortunately those temperatures will also be dropping. It'll be going down to 16 degrees for the low tomorrow with partly cloudy skies and 18 mile per hour winds with those 25 mile per hour wind gusts and the sun is setting at 527 p.m. But let's look at the five day. So we're going to be Thursday it's going to be 64 degrees with thunderstorms. Friday will be some sun but the temperature is dropping down to 27 degrees. Saturday will be rising up to 36 degrees with some partly cloudy skies. Sunday will be raining but in the morning there will be some ice so watch out for that and on Monday the temperature will be rising up to 46 degrees but we'll still be seeing that rain. Rain, rain go away. That's what I want to say. All right, thanks Madeline. Still ahead on Evening Edition, another blackface controversy comes out in Virginia. But first on Wall Street, stocks end of the day with negative feedback. This report has more coming up next at 5.30. A second summit between the United States and North Korea is on the agenda. President Trump made the announcement during last night's State of the Union address. President Trump says the U.S. is focused on a, quote, historic push for peace on the Korean Peninsula. If I had not been elected president of the United States, we would right now, in my opinion, be in a major war with North Korea. President Trump will meet with his North Korean counterpart on February 27th and 28th in Vietnam. President Trump's former personal lawyer had his testimony scrapped. The House Intelligence Panel reports that Michael Cohen's closed-door testimony that was planned for Friday will be held on February 28th instead. He was summoned to appear next week with the Senate Intelligence Committee, but it is not clear if the meeting will still take place. Cohen is currently slated to start a three-year prison sentence on March 6th after pleading guilty to tax and campaign finance crimes and lying to Congress in his 2017 testimony. And Senator Elizabeth Warren apologized to the Washington Post Tuesday for identifying herself as Native American for almost two decades. However, a state bar registration card from 1986 shows that she's been claiming to be Native American for much longer. Warren said today that she is not a member of an American tribe and she is sorry that she was not more careful with her claims earlier in her career. And another Virginia official is in the middle of a controversy. State Attorney General Mark Herring stepped down as co-chair of the Democrats Attorneys General Association today. Earlier in the day, Herring admitted appearing in a blackface at a 1980 party. In a statement, Herring said that he was 19 years old when he dressed up as a rapper at the party and wore brown makeup. Herring said that was the only time and it doesn't reflect the man he is now. And in Midtown Atlanta, streets were closed to, to the public today due to a manhole covering, cover blowing off. Witnesses reported multiple loud booms with smoke following. Atlanta police are saying this was caused by an underground electrical explosion. No injury, injuries were reported, but some roads were still closed. And a Massachusetts woman in voluntary manslaughter conviction still stands after urging her boyfriend to kill himself. Michelle Carter was 17 years old when she encouraged Conrad Roy III to take his own life. Roy died after inhaling carbon monoxide on his in his truck. Carter was convicted and sentenced to 15 months in prison. Carter's attorney are also considering to appeal the U.S. Supreme Court. A Texas woman is speaking out after she says her grandson died when an e-cigarette exploded as he was trying to use it. The Tarrant County Medical Examiner says William Eric Brown died from a stroke caused by a severed artery from a vaporizer pen explosion. The explosion happened in the parking lot of a vape shop near Beach and Golden Triangle in Fort Worth. It's still unclear what company created the vape pen in question. And Grammy-nominated rapper 21 Savage is currently being held with no bail because officials say he was not living in the U.S. legally. His birth certificate shows that his birthplace is in the U.K. The news shocked fans across the nation. Savage entered the U.S. legally in 2005, but his visa expired in 2006, and he has not had a legal visa since. Democratic Congressman Hank Johnson sent a letter to ICE asking for the rapper's release. And the Academy Awards will be very different this year. The ceremony will be host list for an entire 
telecast. Actor and comedian Kevin Hart was the previous host, but stepped down in December. Now the Academy confirms that they have no intention of replacing him this year. It's the first time an Oscar telecast has been hostless in 30 years. And now here's Tyler Zobby with a preview of what's coming up next in sports. Tyler? Thank you, Jacob. We'll find out how SIU did on their signing day and basketball heads to Missouri State. This and more on River Region Evening Edition. A congested middle of the Missouri Valley pack will unclog a little tonight after SIU takes on Missouri State. The Dogs won the first meeting earlier this season in Carbondale in the conference opener. A recently closed series, the last seven matchups have been decided by six points or less, and all won by SIU. A win for the Dogs would also give them a three-game winning streak. Tip is scheduled for 7 p.m. on the MVC TV network. And signing day came and went for the Salukis, and it was a fruitful one. Head coach Nick Hill welcomed 18 athletes to the program, including two FBS transfers. And of those 18, five signees are from right here in Illinois, and three of those five right here in the southern Illinois area. Head coach Nick Hill will discuss the incoming recruiting class later this evening at the Stadium Club in a press conference. And after sweeping the Don Noon Invitational, two Saluki throwers are taking home Field Athlete of the Week honors. Senior Alexis Roberson is a repeat winner, having won the award once already this season and now five times total in her career. For junior Adam Kessler, this is the third time this season he's been named to the award. Both athletes are ranked top 20 nationally. And a Pennsylvania court denied former Penn State assistant Jerry Sandusky's request for a retrial, but did order him to be resentenced. The court's reasoning is that the court imposed mandatory minimums, and that was illegal. His new sentence will be without those minimums. Meanwhile, Sandusky will continue to serve his prison sentence. And as the NBA trade deadline approaches, the basketball world watches to see if Anthony Davis will get dealt. But in the meantime, the Clippers traded Tobias Harris to Philadelphia earlier this morning, creating a big four for the 76ers. The deal includes the Clippers receiving two future first round picks. And the Detroit Pistons also made a move Monday, swapping Stanley Johnson to the Bucks for Ton Maker. But that wasn't the only move the Pistons made, moving Reggie Bullock to the Lakers for Svee Mikhailuk in a second round pick. And an upset from Urbana-Champaign last night as the Illinois Fighting Illini upended Michigan State. Freshman guard Io Dasumu led the way for the Illini, scoring 24 points on 8 of 14 shooting and 4 threes. The Spartans are second the top win for Illinois, who upset Maryland at home earlier this season. Their next game is Saturday against Rutgers. And once again, the play of the day is on the rink. New Jersey Devils player Jesper Brat flicks a no-look pass from behind the net to teammate Pavel Zaka and scores, tying the game at one apiece. However, it was the only bright spot in the Devils' 5-1 loss to the Los Angeles Kings. All right, well, thank you, Tyler. And when is the sunshine going to return? Madeline has a final check of the forecast next. But first, as we head to break, be sure to follow us on social media at River Region News and check out our website for more local content. We'll be right back. Last night marked the first open mic night for SIU spoken word RSO, and the students in, the, in attendance heard more than just poetry. Evening edition, Zach Warhus has a story. You can yell, you can root them on, you can just snap, or you can just, you can just gasp even. That's one of the biggest appeals with spoken word to many people, the freedom of expression. Whether you're yelling or snapping in the crowd, performing an emotional poem, or retelling an old nursery rhyme with an original spin. Fuzzy Wuzzy was a bear. To get a little more perspective on this, I got a chance to catch up with the presidents of SIU's Spoken Word RSO, Luis Prado and Molly Kurtz, to see what it means to them. Well, I think it's a really unique platform to present your emotions in a way that's maybe not as direct. Attendees not only have the opportunity to perform and appreciate poetry, special guest speaker Patricia Rivasio was there to talk about her book, inspired by a famous SIU professor. My book tells my own personal story how Buckminster Fuller, the great professor who used to work here at SIU, completely changed my life. 
Her book is called The Girl from Spaceship Earth, and it's about her personal journey in learning about, understanding, and adopting the theories and ideas of Buckminster Bucky Fuller, which she believes are still relevant to this day. I wrote the book because I was convinced that Bucky has ideas that could really still save the world. And whether or not you believe in Bucky's ideas, everyone in attendance could agree that the night was a work of art. For River Region, I'm Zach Warhus. Okay, Madeline, I'm writing a poem about the weather. What should I include in it? Well, you definitely should include how much rain is going to be coming in okay. the next couple of days. Thursday we have thunderstorms and we have more rain on Sunday and Monday. We actually have some ice on Sunday morning, so we need to be looking out for that because the temperatures are going to start dropping this weekend. So be on the lookout for that over the next couple of days. So keep the rain gear handy, but get the winter coats out because Spring is not here yet. Yeah, spring is definitely not here yet. We do have some sunshine on Friday and Saturday, but it's going to be really cold. So make sure you have still have your winter coats out, still have like your really thick socks because it's going to be pretty cold, and we're going to have really need those umbrellas at least by Sunday. Exactly. Yep. All right. Thanks, Madeline. No problem. Thank you for joining us tonight. The Nightly Business Report is next. I'm Hannah Frisch. And I'm Jacob Gordon for Madeline Parker, Tyler Zabi, and all the students who work on Evening Edition. Have a good night, and we'll see you tomorrow.